Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service. I pray that the Lord will bless us as we rejoice and celebrate with him this day and give him all the praise and all the glory. I have a few intimations now for the week ahead. Monday evening is our prayer meeting on Zoom at 6.30pm. Wednesday morning service on YouTube and on the telephone. Thursday evening we have the God Question discussion again on Zoom at 7pm. And Saturday coffee morning is at 10.30am also on Zoom. If you would like to access any of these events, then please contact Joanne, who will give you the relevant information on how to do that. And now, our call to worship. Come to the sower of seeds, planter of hearts. Come this morning to the enriched, fertile ground of God's love. Come away from the stony ground, away from the strangling weeds. Come, let your roots be strengthened and your hearts flourish. Come and worship God. Let us pray. God of grace and love, we rely on your love extended to us in all ways and at all times. We live day by day knowing that your care and concern is poured out for us in your provision for our needs and beyond our imagining. You entrust us with the gift of the good news of the gospel and invite us to be partners in the sharing of the message of grace. Day by day, we see the many gifts lavished upon us. 
We come to you to acknowledge and praise you for all your goodness to us. Merciful God, we often appear to be consumed by greed and selfishness. We indulge ourselves and ignore the needs of others. We are quick to protect what we believe is our own and forget to share the bounty you have so generously provided for us. O God of grace and glory, we give you thanks for the rhythm of the seasons and the constant provision for our needs in life. We know we don't deserve the mercy and love you have shown to us, all day by day in so many ways. May we treasure your word and this message and be more aware of our responsibility as disciples. In gratitude to you for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 10 to 13. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it, without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes from out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands instead of the thorn bush that will grow a pine tree. Instead of the briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. Amen, amen. The Lord bless this reading. Our second reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, and then 18 to 23. The parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered round him, that he got in a boat and sat in it, while all the other people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places and did have not much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let them hear. Listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed and fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or pers persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who receives the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but worries of his life and deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed and fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred 60 or 30 times which is sown. 
Amen, and may the Lord bless this reading. I came across a short reflection while I was preparing for today's service. How awful, how indiscriminate of God to throw open the gates of the kingdom so that anyone might find a way in. No standards, no safeguards, but a generosity that is sure to be abused and just as scandalous today as was this message to those who listened to Jesus. Still, there are those who do not want to believe, who want to rewrite the story of God's unconditional welcome, who want to maintain standards and conditions and limit the sphere of the amazing kingdom of God. Thankfully, the God of the universe knows no bounds and cannot be subdued, but carries on regardless sowing and reaping, shuffling and shoveling, making space for all, throwing wide the doors and gathering us in. The message of Matthew 13 is one of hope to the faithful disciples, that even when the results are not seen or evident anywhere, there is no cause for despair. God is in charge, even when the evidence is not evident. The parable focuses on what God is able to do in the world through the ministry of Jesus and the choices set before people. Failure is an indictment of the ground and of the sower, not of the seed. Jesus teaches from a boat on the sea, but his teaching is earthy using images of seeds and soil. Professor William Barclay paints a vivid picture of what in all likelihood happened. And that was that Jesus was using the boat by the lakeside as a pulpit. In one of the fields nearby there was a sower sowing and Jesus took the sower whom they could all see as a text and began 
Look at the sower there, sowing the seed in his field. Jesus began from something which at that moment they could actually see to open their minds to truth, which as yet they had never seen. In Palestine there were two ways of sowing seed. It could be sown by the sower, scattering it broadcast as he walked up and down the field. Of course, if the wind was blowing, then some of the seed would be blown up and down the field in all sorts of places, and sometimes out of the field altogether. The second way was a lazy way, but not uncommonly used. It was to put a sack of seed on the back of an ass, to tear a hole in the corner of the sack, and then to walk the animal up and down the field where the seed ran out. In such a case, some of the seed might well dribble out while the animal was crossing the pathway and before it reached the field at all. In Palestine, the fields were in long, narrow strips and the ground between the strips was always a right of way used as a common path and therefore it was beaten as hard as a pavement by countless passers-by. That is what Jesus means by the wayside. If seed fell there and some was bound to have fallen there, whatever way it was sown, there was no more chance of it growing than if it had fallen on the road. The stony ground was not the ground filled with stones, it was what would have been common in Palestine, a thick skin of earth on top of an underlying layer of limestone. The earth might only have been a few inches deep before the rock was reached. On such ground the seed would certainly germinate and it would germinate quickly because the ground grew quickly warm with the heat of the sun, but there was no depth of earth and when it sent down its roots in search of nourishment and moisture, it would eat only rock and would starve to death and be quite unable to withstand the heat of the sun. The thorny ground was deceptive. When the sower was sowing, the ground would look clean enough. It was easy to make a garden look clean by turning it over. But in the ground lay fibrous roots of crouch grass and bishop weed and all the perennial pests ready to spring into life again. Every gardener knows that the weeds grow with a speed and a strength that few good seeds could equal. The result was that the good seed and the dormant seed grew together, but the weeds were so strong that they throttled the life out of the seed. The good ground was deep and clean and soft. The seed would gain an entry. It could find nourishment. It could grow unchecked. And in the good ground, it brought forth an abundant harvest. In Matthew chapter 13, we see in the parable of the sower, and later in the same chapter, the parable of the weeds. The conflict between God and the devil. The sower in both these parables is God, the Creator. The devil is the one looking for every opportunity to snatch away the seed that falls on infertile ground. I am sure we have all seen photos or film of farmers from bygone days sowing their seed in freshly ploughed fields, throwing the seed indiscriminately into the four corners of the field. Nowadays it's done by machines pulled along behind the tractor. Probably a more controlled method where the seed is planted 
by and large in the fertile ground. In both these parables, Jesus say, He who has ears, let him hear. A stern warning, I think, to be on our guard when we stumble off the fertile ground onto the stony path where the devil and his legions are waiting to tempt us into a life of sin and sorrow. We now have the opportunity in this short time of silence to make our offering to God. Heavenly Father, we know we can never repay you for all you have done for us, but accept these humble offerings to use to further your kingdom and spread the good news of Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion, we pray for the many who are oppressed by crushing political and economic circumstances, those persecuted on grounds of faith or ethnicity or background, families torn apart by age-old feuds, petty tensions, ill-founded jealousies and destructive attitudes based on concepts of exclusion, privilege and prejudice. Men and women ground down by lack of food and opportunities of inclusion, children oppressed by discrimination and disadvantage, the downtrodden and those seen as unable to make a positive contribution to the life of the world. Empower, encourage and endorse those who try to address the needs of the isolated and lonely, often at enormous personal cost. We bring before you the sick in mind, body and spirit, those brave souls on the front line in this pandemic who have given of themselves in selfless service. Many of them have succumbed to this virus. Lord, we pray for those families left, bereft of a loved one, some bereft of more than one. O oh God of love and comfort, encircle them with your loving arms, so that they may feel not alone in their grief. Father, speak to the hearts and minds of those in power across the globe, that they would do the right thing and put their people before all else. Political parties laying aside their differences and pooling their knowledge to defeat this virus, ravaging our world. We pray for those for whom the proclamation of the gospel is a privilege, but not one without cost and personal sacrifice. For all whose lives, however apparently insignificant and lacking in prestige, and power are attempting to be faithful to the gospel in Jesus' name because they are confident of the inclusive love and mercy you have demonstrated in and through Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen.
and now the benediction. May the God of all knowledge and the God of all love give us peace in our hearts as we spread the good seeds of God's kingdom to all those around us.